Yo, what's going on? It's your boy Mozzie here to announce the winner. Oh my God! Oh my God! Could you turn that up, please? Of the two floor seats to brawl or nothing. Drum roll, please. At Red Lipstick Mouse, congratulations. You will be heading to brawl or nothing to have some floor seats to not only some of the craziest fights here in the city, but to see Conway the Machine. I've been running this shit so long, I'ma be honest, it's not even fair. Niggas is pussy that side over there, so why would I care if somebody got air? Live in effect at the Tech Port Arena, October 8th. So congratulations, we will see you there. And to everybody else, be sure to grab your tickets at DaviesEntertainment.com. Listen, they're going fast. You don't want to miss out. It's Boy Mozzie, I'll see y'all there, man. We're all or nothing. Mm. City, a lot of despair, and mama love ain't have a dollar to spare. You gotta be careful. You gotta keep. Cause she was talking shit about her, like, oh yeah, wrestling is fake and shit, and everybody's like, fuck you, bitch, <laughs> fuck you, die. And I was like, <laughs> and I was like, uh, I know you live in Austin. You wanna come to our show? Right. Yeah, I'll teach you wrestling. And she was all about it. And I remember Anna came before before he came to live with us. Like, you know me, a Khalifa. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know who Mia Khalifa was. I was like, yo, yeah. yo, you know, you don't know who Mia Khalifa is? Like, no. And then he sends me some links and I was like, bro, why are you sending me this? <laughs> <laughs> mm. I put this on everything. Party people. I love it's this. your boy, my and sweat Santa. My clothes were yes. this. this. Thought I told you this is my world, baby. Ladies and gentlemen, party people in the place to be. It's your boy M A Z. I, I am happy right now. Yeah, you geeking, man. I'm kind of geeking <laughs> a little bit, man. Um, listen, I guess quick introduction. Skrills. Skrills. What's going Skrills. on? Southside now. Yeah, don't worry about me. Don't worry about me. <laughs> I'll get to it. Just get to Let's it. Let's get right, to cool. it. Let's get to it. Wait, no, you got come on, Lambo. Oh yeah, the wife is here. Hi. Oh. My wife, Lambo. Hi. <laughs> Come on. Don't worry about me. Worry about her. Yeah, for sure. Make sure she gets the introduction. Let's get to it. <sighs> Listen, we've been chasing this person down for a while now. <laughs> yes, you have. A long time. Wow. And uh, <laughs> we doctored videos. Yeah, definitely doctored one of her videos. You know what I mean? You know? Got some traction. People in the comment <laughs> section tagged her a little bit. Was like, "Yo, pull up." <laughs> and now she's finally. Here, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Thunder Rosa is in the house. wearing my t-shirt that you can actually i don't think that's uh um th that's not on on uh a pro wrestling tees anymore right nah it was limited limited edition yeah and yeah. i had to snag it yeah that's one of my favorites and then the quality of that shirt's actually one of the best it's like light especially yeah. for san antonio dude it was 100 degrees today man <laughs> i believe yeah it's wow. crazy in late september late september right no summer never ends it seems booty like. short Style. <laughs> yeah, no thong thong style. If it was Puerto Rico style, oh lord, you know what I mean? <laughs> right? Oh. oh man, so how are you doing tonight? I'm good. I was just uh, we just uh, went to Walmart, you know, like you know the mom that I am. I went and took my son who's here, Anakin. Hey, this That's is a funny thing. So we went to get groceries. You know what we got? Duvalines. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Bubalu bubulubus. Uh <laughs> Carlos Quinto and cereal and milk. There you go. It's healthy, healthy for everyone. That, that's usually what happens when you go into Walmart. <laughs> no, I have a really sweet tooth for Mexican candy. It's mm -hmm. either very, very spicy and salty or very sweet. Gotcha. So, duvalines have to be at my house or mazapanes. So, actually, we had um, Simon. He took a three pound of mazapanes back to London. Oh, wow. Because he loved them. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's a lot. Yeah. He, I mean, he liked it. You know, I always try to introduce uh, the Mexican culture or the San Antonio culture to foreign wrestlers that come here. I have one right now from Tokyo Joshi Pro. 
Shota, uh, and uh, we took him to eat barbecue yesterday in Luling. Oh, yeah. Oh, my oh God. you took him to Luling? Oh, barbecue capital. Yes. So he sat down, and I literally, he was like, when in Japanese, says oishi. He's like, mm, oishi, oishi. <laughs> he kept saying that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we had him eat that, and then we had him eat tacos, and yeah. then he ate like real guacamole and quesadillas for the first time. Wow. With carne asada. So, wow. And then some good, you know, local beer. You know, I know how to treat my people, man. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Which is is cool too because you do the, the taco vlogs yes. as well. Yes. And I, I actually just got done watching Danhausen, which yes. he's such a character. Uh, <laughs> the most watched taco vlog it was with him. Honestly, he yeah. didn't break character at all. My other one of my favorites is Mick Foley, man. I saw that. I saw you met the the legend himself, Mick Foley, man. So talk about that real quick, like meeting him and. Like, what's the relationship? I know it's, it's more than just, it seemed like more than just um, wrestling, you know? Like what? How, how do you contact him? I think he, like, contacted me on Twitter because we, um, he's one of those f uh, few people that I know he's done a lot of good yes. in, in the wrestling business and outside of the wrestling business. So, I, how I actually know him was through La Rosa Negra. When La Rosa Negra broke both of her knees mm -hmm. he's the one who donated the money for her to get her surgeries wow. wow so after he after she came back from japan she had no money she was broke and like we were doing a uh um go fund me for her and he donated i think it was between three or six thousand dollars that's that's nice yes so we started talking like that and i was like oh my god thank you for helping my friend and then I was like, oh, you're going to be in San Antonio, right? He was going to do his comedy show. He's like, yeah. you want to come to my comedy show? I was like, hell yeah. And I was like, uh, by the way, I'm doing this taco vlog thing. Do you, will you mind coming in some tacos? Yeah, absolutely. And then he gave me, he was super, super easy to contact. And uh, he gave me his number. We picked him up. And then we had the taco vlog, in, which he loves to talk, right? And right. <laughs> so it was uh, one and two. And uh, I had such a wonderful time. And just getting to know him and getting to know his story and what he does in Christmas in Christmas time, uh, he actually wrote some like uh, Santa Claus letters for my for my friend uh, Melanie, who's uh, who's worked with us for a long time for Mission Pro Wrestling, and she wrote some letters for her kids, yeah. Santa Claus. So it was really really cute. That's so, what's up. Yeah, he's a really cool dude. And by the way, hopefully I, I'm not um, next week. We're gonna have him in Busted Open because we're gonna be talking about the the bright side of wrestling. You know, the dark side. And we're for trying sure. to talk about the bright side. Like again, I've met so many wrestlers that are legends that are doing stuff uh on the outside that people really don't know what they do yeah but it's like it's really cool um jbl was another one that i had an opportunity to talk to uh that's dr con and yeah. he was telling me that he i mean the, the, the guy has dough so uh <laughs> <laughs> For sure. he does a lot of philanthropy work all over the country all over the country the world that yeah. he builds schools and stuff and he's helped thousands and thousands of students and, and people that really need it. So it was really cool to hear from, from him and, and yeah. you know, what he's doing after retirement. So it was, it's cool. So, yeah. And, you know, I like to do a lot of volunteer work myself. I, yeah. um, that's like one of the things that I really enjoy and it, it fills my heart with joy. And that's one of the things that I tell Anakin too, that he needs to be like, that just grounds it because he, it shows you how <laughs> he's like, nah, yeah. he's like, how thankful you should be about the life that we have. Like, like right now we went to Walmart and we're looking at the prices of food, right? Yeah. And then and I've taken him to do grocery shopping for, for years now. And even when he was in Mexico, like we both come from like really low income parents, mm -hmm. you know, and like his situation was different than mine. He's my, he's that, he's my stepson. So, uh, we know what it is to like be looking for like a peso under the, you know, under mm. the sofa to buy a, you know, a kilo of tortillas. Yeah. And then I'm not having any money or going going to sleep hungry. So mm -hmm. uh, when I take him out there, he's like, oh, shit, like things are expensive. You know, yeah. But yeah, it's called inflation. That's like inflation. <laughs> <laughs> right. So and now when we're driving over here, uh, I was telling you that like uh, only times that I've been here is when we do the the soup and like uh, hot chocolate drives. Yeah. It's really, really hot and uh, hot, really, really cold here. For sure. We, we do that. We get blankets and stuff. With the Salvation Army, we've done it for like three years in a row, and um, and just seeing a lot of the people and a lot of a lot of the need in in our communities, it really breaks my heart. For sure. But um, but I I try to teach them that it's important that we ha we give back to our community, no matter how rich or poor, it's important to help others. Absolutely. Couldn't send it better myself. <laughs> nah, for real. The more you know, it, it's, it's real. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely real. for real. Um, so real quick for people who literally been living under a rock. Yeah. Who is Thunder Rosa? I'm motherfucking Thunder Rosa, guys. 
<laughs> if you ain't know. Uh, you know well, what I mean? They, they, they call me La Mera Mera. They don't call me La, La Mera Mera. I mean, the, the boss bitch. Right? Hey! So Let it be known. Let it be known. Uh-huh. You know, is that they have that bitch, they have that boss, <laughs> blue, 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 but I'm la mera, mera, puto, so that's how it is. So I am from Tijuana, Baja California. They call me from the graveyards of Tijuana, Mexico. I'm the first ever Mexican-born female wrestler to have earned and won the NWA Women's World Championship uh-huh. and the AW Women's World Championship. Look, let it be known. <laughs> oh, and the only wrestler from Graduated from UC Berkeley, baby. Okay. <laughs> okay. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Nice, nice. Ber- Berkeley. Yeah, which I'm going in two weeks uh, to give a, a speaking engagement. Yeah? So, yes. That's dope. <laughs> to the Cal Athletics, yeah. For, we're going to be dope. talking about, you know, uh, women of color in the sports entertainment. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about the, the path to becoming a wrestler. Yeah. What made you want to get into wrestling of, of all things, you know? Um, I was not really thinking that I was going to be a wrestler. I was like 28. I was working as a social worker. I was super depressed. Um, and wrestling was like something fun that we used to do once a month. And uh, we went to this place called Oprah Wrestling. And I watched it. I was like, oh, man, this is actually like real like athletes in this bitch. Yeah. And, <laughs> and there was a tryout. And... Um, at the moment, uh, my partner was like, "Hey, uh, I think you should just like keep work and just do the dry up." And I'm like, "Yeah, for what?" And I was like, "Just be a wrestler. Like, just, just, let's try it." And then when I did it, and it, it was like I always say this, it was like a drug, you know? Yeah. It's like, I mean, I don't want to say it's like meth, but it was like. <laughs> 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 so the nip is specifically like. Oh, no, because you know it's, it hurts you, but you are like, yeah, give me some more. Right? You know? Yeah, so, for sure. And it was there. It was like I tried it and I got hooked. So I've been hooked for eight years. And it's wow. like, you know that some some of the highs, you can get some of the highest highs, which this week they're going to be in um, at the U.S. Open in New York. I saw that big. I, and, and and I know, and I know, and I My wish you were the... face of disappointment because <sighs> last year I was the one who opened the show. And I cannot tell you how awesome that moment was because yeah. when I was walking, they had this walkway, right? And it had the Mexican flag as I'm walking and mm. the roar of the people. We had 15,000 people at the time. Yeah. It wasn't full yet, but it was so loud. It was so loud. I, I, I see the pictures and I see like this big ass smile and I was like, wow, I was born for this. Yeah. And just the love of the people and I remember I got like, I got like tears in my eyes and like <laughs> people with the Mexican flags it's like, yeah, viva la raza. You know? <laughs> You know, because back then, it was like, they used to say that a lot when, you know, uh, uh, Eddie Guerrero was out, yeah. you know? Viva la raza. And it's like, every time that people say that, I remember Eddie, yeah, you know? For sure. My son watches Eddie all the time. He's like obsessed with him lately. So, <laughs> yeah. um, he was great. Like, he was great as a wrestler. And he represented a lot of people. And now, it's like, uh, he's, he's cousin, you know? Um, he told me, hey, hey, sis, we're passing the baton to you. It's your, it's your time to represent. He said that it was he hugged me. Yeah, you know? That's big. Chavito, Chavito came and said that to me. That's big. I haven't said I have actually haven't shared that, but he Wow. Yeah, after I won the championship, he was he was out there for one of the tapings and he like gave me a hug and he's like, Hey hermana, it's time for it's time for you to like represent a raza. That's big. It's wow. your time now. Wow. And I was like, Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> it took big shoes to feel. I'm sure, I'm sure that was a lot of pressure and I know the bar. No, it still was a lot of pressure, man. Yeah. It's like, you know, seeing from where I came from, which I'm not. A, I was not a fan of professional wrestling. I didn't watch wrestling when I was growing up. I wasn't hmm. like, oh my god, when I was three years old, like I, you know, I watched uh, Trish Stratus and, and Lita and her song. You know, no, I didn't know who they were. Like I remember yeah. watching my one of my friends was like, "This is what you're not supposed to do." He put a match of Ashley Mazzaro and uh-huh. Mickey James, and she's like, "Be like Mickey." <laughs> like, be like Mickey, you know. And I remember watching, and I, I watch it with other eyes. I don't watch it with the eyes of a, of like. They call it in you know in the wrestling business Mark or gotcha. super fan. Yeah, I watch it as a as a student of the sport for sure. So I fell in love with the sport, you know, yeah. and um and I fell in love with the opportunities that the sport gave me for my dreams. I always wanted to travel, you know, I, you know, living in Tijuana. I didn't have I didn't get in a plane until I was eighteen because 
FAFSA, you know, they gave me my financial aid and I was like, hey guys, you want to go on a vacation? <laughs> you know, so I took the whole family <laughs> with the money from, from school. So sure. for me, school was a thing that took me out of poverty, right? But wrestling was going to, you know, make my dreams come true. Got you. And, and that's what happened. So I did that on that tryout and then I just started volunteering. I started learning about the business. I didn't, not so much about how to bump, but how, how to put a ring together, sure. how to put a show together, how to... Uh, like everything, because it's more than just wrestling. It's that there's so many aspects of the business that you can make a lot of money. Yeah. So right in there, I was like, oh, I can make hella money on this. Like, <laughs> so like, let me start doing some stuff. And even before I started wrestling, I already had merchandise. We already market uh, market our stuff. Uh, we already had fans. So by the time I already like had my first match, people were already waiting for me to wrestle. Mm. Yeah. So it's like telling the story from you know the genesis into like that. So yeah. Um, when I go and look at the pictures and I, I look at um, when when I was able to exercise in my gym, we, we, <laughs> we have a lot of the posters from all the shows that I've been in mm -hmm. and all the shows that we created from the two uh, with the two uh, promotions that we created, which the first one was Sabotage and now was Mission Pro Wrestling, which is all female run show. Um, I see all the things and all the women that have come through that I had become very successful just along, you know, along the way. And then it was just, it's really cool to see, to see that. I mean, I cannot tell you how difficult it has been and now being on top, how difficult it is to stay on top and to stay relevant and also to have respect for what you do and have respect for yourself. For sure. Because once you have fame, once you have money, it's really easy to like go and kind of like um, sacrifice your integrity and sacrifice who you really are for, you know, for money. For sure. Or for like the spot, or for for that, and I. That's one of the things that I I have tried to teach my my son. That and, <laughs> and also a lot of the girls that are coming from Mission Pro Wrestling. That mm -hmm. is sometimes it's better to just keep your integrity than to make you know money. Quick, yeah, quick buck. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, nah, that 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 makes that makes perfect sense. Yeah, and I mean, I'm self-made. Like, a lot of the stuff before I got into where I am is because I work my ass off and I sacrifice so much to be where I am because that was my dream and that's what I wanted. And it's like, you are so focused on, on doing that thing that you think is going to give you, like, all the happiness. But then when you get, you get it, you're like, holy shit, this is completely different than what it's I expected. Not what I, exactly. No, no, no. And it's, it's I don't know, It's it's been... It, it, it's been a lot of like we call it peaks and valleys yeah right. and uh so moments and where i remember i was i think i told i was telling my son a couple a couple months ago that and in, in some of the moments like being when i was like sleeping on the floors with my homies it was some of the happiest moments i have instead of like being in some of the most expensive hotels and just feeling the most alone ever gotcha. you know so it's like it's just so many you know contrast because yeah. Being on top sometimes can be very, very lonely. No, for sure. Um, it, it's 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 wild you say that because people talk about you know the success and the fame and how getting there once you get it and get everything that you wanted in your in your world, it's you're still not happy. Yeah, and but, there's a lot of people that are not happy. Right, and which and, and of course you know outside looking in, it's kind of like, well, why you know? But you never know what that person could be going through. But they always say that grind, you know, on you know, on the way up with you know people that was grinding with you is like the best times, you know. Yeah, because so. it's like when you see the development of of who you become, right? And right. like a lot of people, when they get there, they forget where they came from. For sure. Oh, I cannot stand that man. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot stand that. I seen some people, and I'm just like, yo, like you're like nine and day, man. Like they don't, you don't even say hi to like. Yeah. Like, I mean, I'm like. Dude, I know the drivers, I know the cooks, I know the security guys, I know the people that work in the in, in, in there. Like a lot of the production people, I always make sure I say hi to everyone, I hug everyone, I kiss everyone. They might think I'm like, you know, being flirtatious, but that's how Mexicans are. We like to kiss and <laughs> hug everyone. You know, I remember that when I first started dating my husband, I used to like say hi, you know, el beso en, el, el beso en, la, en el cachete, right? You kiss him, you kiss him in the cheek. Mm -hmm. yeah. He was like, but you kissing boys on the cheek. I was like, that's how we greet each other, dude. Like, yeah. this is, this is like, our, you know, this is how Mexicans do it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> At least that's how we used to do it. And my son is the same way because that's how we were raised. For sure. 
So, I mean, I'm, I've always been very affectionate. So, and uh, my parents always taught me that I should be respectful to people. And we always say hi to everyone. It doesn't matter who you are. Absolutely. I mean, to start, just when I came to this country, I, I did a lot of those jobs. I was a janitor. You know, I was like cleaning. I was a cleaning lady. I was, you know, a clerk. I was, I did a lot of odd jobs to go to college. And I hated when, when uh, some of the, the ladies were were telling me, oh, I'd love to take you to my house. And I just look at them I'm like, bitch, I'm playing for my college with this. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so it, it's like, it gives me perspective because yeah. I really like, I started from the bottom, dude, like from the very, very bottom. Yeah. And even when I was in UC Berkeley, I used to work in the cafeteria and I used, used to be the one who served the kids that lived in the, in the dorms. Yeah. And I used to live like five miles away from there in Oakland because I couldn't afford to live in the dorms, mm. you know? So it's like, yeah, what, what what sandwich do you want? What bagel do you want, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> you want a burrito? You want me to fold your burrito? <laughs> you want to fold your burrito? <laughs> you know? And then after that, I would wash the dishes, and then yeah. I go, I would go about my way to go to class, you know, because I have to pay for my school. Like, yeah, I didn't have rich parents, and so I had like three jobs going to college. Wow. And then when I was in, when I started wrestling, I had uh, I had a regular job, and it was a well paid job, and I had really good benefits, and and we. Uh, I used to make decent money, but when I started making more money with wrestling, because you had to hustle, I was like, oh, uh, uh, yeah, I'm not going to work anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so it got, it got a little difficult because throughout my my journey, I got signed. After Japan, I got signed with Lucha Underground, and it's just like things started taking off. Like it was, There was always something that when they hired me, it was like, oh, you have the it factor. They keep telling me, you have the it yeah. factor, you have the it factor. I didn't know what they meant. But I was like, um, I guess it was very, you're very charismatic. You don't have the skills, but you're very charismatic. You draw, you draw people in. Gotcha. And that's what it went with, with Cobra Moon. I had to learn how to get a character over that wasn't mine. And like a lot of the TV shows that I worked, they didn't want me as Thunder Rosa. They wanted, you wanted me to wear a hood. So I wear Cobra Moon and their Serpentine in WoW. I was the only masked wrestler there. Um, mm -hmm. and then finally after years of, you know, trying to get myself over, um, the, the people from the NWA, David Lagana, he was like, he keep telling me for a year and a half, Hey, I got something for you coming. I got something for you coming. Yeah, yeah brother. Yeah. You got something for me. Like, everybody <laughs> said that shit. And then, and then he's like, Hey, would you like to work with the NWA? And I was like, sure. Yeah. And, and that's how I, I got into NWA. That was 2019. And at the time, I was uh, also training for to do my first MMA fight. Right, that's, oh, that's right. Because you, yes. you were saying, so yeah, it was yeah. it was that. Um, and then I, I uh, hit up one of my homies, the referee homies. I was like, hey, bro, I need I need a job. I'm kind of tired of hustling. And he's like, what do you need? I was like, well, I know that WWE hires a lot of like refs, and they don't have a Mexican ref. So what's up? Yeah. And he's like, let me check. And then they hit me up, and then they got got the ticket and everything. And I was already talking to NWA, and I was about to sign the contract for Combat the Global. And things happened, and I, there was a hurricane, and then I was like, oh, maybe I should not, not go to be a ref, you know? <laughs> right, right, right. So I didn't do that. I left that on, on the side, and and then I signed up for NWA, and then I signed up for the, the fight, which I knew I was going to lose because there was no way with the skills that I had at that moment. I was a white yeah. belt. You know, <laughs> that um uh, I was gonna win, but uh, I I went there to like kind of challenge myself, mm -hmm. and I remember, man, I I watched that that fight, and he was were you sitting on the second row, on the first floor, and row, and I can just hear him in the background. Barely, barely, you know, <laughs> not there, not there. So, so it was like yeah. the challenge was I wanted to show this girl that she could not, she was not gonna take me down. Yeah, she was not gonna choke me, and she was definitely not gonna TKO me. Fuck that. <laughs> right, you right, know, right. I had way too many people there. So uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it left a little scar here because she elbowed me at the second round on the very last Eesh. ten seconds, and I just I was bleeding. That's the first time that I, you know. I cut myself the hard way, brother. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> and that was pretty intense. And then um, it just showed me, like, I, I'm tougher than I think I am. Yeah. Yeah, so. So you attend the fights front row, and you cheering your mother on and everything. Yes. <laughs> Explain that, because I know 
it's different seeing you know wrestling in front of you know a bunch of fans you know hardcore screaming fans and then knowing your son's right there front row like you're doing it for him and everybody you know not only just for the fans watching obviously but seeing your son there front row is like you know do you focus more on him than the fans yeah no when you're there like honestly i mean i could just hear my coaches yeah and i hear him because he's loud as hell so, <laughs> yeah. so my my best friends were there too, you know. My husband was there too, and I had like they had a thunder rose section, and it was kind of cute. When I I see the video, there's like a bunch of people with their like thunder rose section, like yeah. Things. So I was really cool. Like I like the only again, it was for me it was a challenge because I really wanted to show that I can do something at the age that I you know I picked it. I was but I was 33 when I started doing MMA. Wow. And wow. I was doing I was doing that, and I was doing wow, which. During my fight camp, I did 10 matches in one week, and I had, like, fight camp. So I was super stressed out because I was like, man, I should have been doing MMA. But I was like, yeah, but I don't have money to pay for my camp. I got to gotcha. wrestle, yeah. you know? And that's what a lot of the, the my my homies didn't understand because I was, like, the first wrestler to, like, join like that. And they were like, oh, yeah, man, you don't belong in this fucking business. You yeah. know? So, <laughs> so that's how I feel with, like, you know, with the wrestling, too, is like, mm, yeah, yeah, you don't belong here, girl. Like, I don't know what you're doing here. You're too Damn. old, you know? You, you, you're too like you're too brown. You're too brown for this shit. You ain't got no tits. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. I was like, I was not. I was not meant to be successful. I was. I mean, look at me. I'm 36 right now. Um, first generation. I have an accent. Um, I learned how to speak wrestling when I was 28. Mm-hmm. Um, I was smarter. Like I was smarter than some of the people there. So like, that's probably they didn't like that either. And I was always asking questions. Like yeah. when I went to certain places, I was like, why do they treat women like that? Why are they harassing women like this? Yeah. Why are you showing me your dick? Excuse me, why are your balls out? Like, wow. you know, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's like if this was a regular job, you all would have been fired by Absolutely. now. But, you know, yeah. uh, it is not a regular thing. So um, I always, I, I, they call me the heat magnet too. You know, I got a lot of key again because of who I am and yeah. how and how I am, and mm-hmm. just like I'm very unapologetic and I'm myself. You know, yeah, and some people sure. don't like that. So, um, yeah. So it it was very interesting. Now, now that I have time to like look back at what I've done, um, it, it it really I was not supposed to be here. It was like all the odds were against me, but because of how my life has been all the time. Yeah. And uh, I was always a fighter, and I was always fighting against the grind and, and against, like, the stereotypes and against everything, everything, everything. So uh, even with MMA, I was not supposed to last the three rounds, and I lasted three rounds, and it went to to decision. And yeah. the other chick won it, which I was, you know, I mean, evidently she was going to win. <laughs> <laughs> but she didn't beat my ass like, oh, my God, like, my ass were black or, like, right. I couldn't walk. I mean, the only reason why my eyes were black was because I got I got cut and my eyes got puffy. Right, but right. I wasn't that bad. No, I wasn't that bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't. I, I wasn't that bad. You yeah. know. So I'm, I'm again. I'm very proud of of that challenge because that really took me to the next level with that when I started working in NWA and just having yeah. someone who really understood what Thunder Rosa, who Thunder Rosa is, it really took it to the next level. Yeah. And um. And I didn't even know I was going to become a champion there. It just kind of like, uh, I think it's time for you to like step it up and stuff. Yeah. And then COVID happened. And then kind of like, I don't know what was going to happen. That we, we were struggling a little bit. We were living in an apartment in, in Balcones Heights. And I remember um, yeah, just being worried because I was getting paid. I'm going to throw some names. I was getting paid like four grand a, a month, right? For, mm-hmm. And that was, to me, that was a lot of money for wrestling. Sure. And... Um, and then when COVID hit, they were like, hey, guys, well, we want you to stay with the company. Will you take a pay cut? And I was like, sure. Oh, wow. It was a 75% pay cut. Wow. 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 Damn. And, and I believe in the company, right? Yeah. And it was it was tough. Like, there was moments in where I was like, you know, shit, well, how are we going to pay for this? How are we going to pay for that? And Sure. You know, because, you know, you still have bills and shit. So you, you got to hustle. So I... Hustle even more. My my husband at the time didn't didn't stop working at all, so that that helped. And um, and then AEW contacted me in July, and they're like, "We're interested in bringing you in. Can what can you do, sister?" I was like, uh, "Gonna sign with that, okay. Right, right, yeah, right. So um, all of a sudden, in August 2020, 
they called me and they were like, hey, uh, so we're going to let you go and do AEW. And it was supposed to be a one-off. And I went and had the match with Serena. Serena got signed. And I'm like, right. that's going to be the story for me for a while. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that happened there. And then um, then we had All Out with Sheeta. And that really changed my life right there. Yeah, that All Out pay-per-view event was, was crazy. Yeah, it was. That was that was crazy. It was. It was like um, just the build up to like the the promo, the one minute promo. Yeah, my famous one minute promos, brother. <laughs> 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 they were. That was the one that I like. I said what I was gonna do and I did it. You know, yeah. and, and that's what I, I focus on for the whole entire time that I've been in AEW. Uh, it was to like to really help raise women's wrestling and to bring the division to a to the next level. Um, because that's what I always wanted to do, and that's what I always have, you know, preach is about uh, building other women and, and, and building the divisions. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Which kind of leads up to the Dynamite episode on St. Patty's Day mm-hmm. here in the city when you oh. won the AW title. Yeah. The cage match with yes. Britt Baker. Yes. That was insane. It was. I happen to be in the building, people. <laughs> so... <laughs> um, you know, of course, I, I shout out my boy Dante. He was there with me. Um, and you guys were holding hands and crying when I won. I personally, <laughs> me, so it was me, Dante, and my friend Johnny J5. What's going on? Um, Dante was going for Britt Baker. Of course. <laughs> he was going for Britt Baker, of course, I was, and I was going for you. And then, of course, you know, you come out with the, with the mariachis and all that. I was like, oh, the city is on fire. The arena was shaking and all that. And I was like, yo, she has to win. <laughs> this is her match to win. Like, there's no way she's walking out of here without the title. And then, obviously, enough of you win the title. I jump on Twitter. Yo, the city is is up right now. We going downtown. We going downtown to honk. What we doing? You know what I mean? Then I that's when I hit you. Like, yo, next time you in town, do the yeah. podcast. You're like, oh, I live here. <laughs> Just let me know. And I'm like, oh shit, okay, yeah. bet. But talk about. Oh, we got it up on the screen. Talk about that match, man, and, and what this meant to you? Well, uh, it was, a. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, it was, it's, it's hard for me to say because prior to the match, it was the preparation to it. It was, it was yeah. intense because I remember going, being at the house in the morning and I'm like crying, right? Because I, I know that, you know, this, this is gonna be your moment. It's for sure. Yeah. You know, so, um, just you know, trying to to I was trying to put DMD right there, but I couldn't. Right. <laughs> uh, you know, my dad and my my dad, my sister was there. Anakin was there. My husband was were there. Um, it was such an incredible moment. It was. Uh, I didn't know how how it was gonna feel, um, but. Uh, my face is so ugly. <laughs> so I was like crying. Jesus. The confetti. The confetti was like, I still have confetti and I have, dude, bro, I have like, <laughs> I have like 200, like 100 and something uh, thumbtacks in there, like on the side of my, on my leg. Yeah, that, that was insane. Damn. I was like, like well, seeing those slams and I'm just kind of like, I kind of turned my I face away. I don't even know so. how we were walking, honestly, after that. Yeah. It was, that match was insane. It was. It was insane. It, it, one of those moments that I don't think um, it's gonna be very hard to like. Um, yeah, I. Yeah, it's 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 sad. It's it's like Jerry Lynn always says it's, it's all about the chase, and it's literally all about the chase, mm. right? Um, because we knew it was gonna happen. Sure. But I didn't know it was gonna happen in San Antonio. Yeah. I thought it was gonna be in another moment, but leading up to that, I remember Tony Allen, who's my uh, media PR representative <laughs> shout out to tony um he's the one who's like melissa you are in san antonio you must come out with a mariachi and like to get the mariachi was intense because yeah. uh one of my friends fan glenn uh who's a huge fan he lives here in san antonio his sister actually plays in that mariachi oh okay so she's like you gotta contact you gotta contact them so i went and contact her her and she's like yeah we love 
to do it? And then they give me a prize. And then the, the guy that runs it, he was just, you know, playing ball, you know, hardball. And all hardball, like, yeah. I was yeah. like, bro, you don't understand. <laughs> you don't understand how important this is for the yeah. Mexican people and for the women that are going to be out there, right. you know, and we're going to be out representing the Latinos all over the world, right? Yeah. And I kid you not, that moment right there, people from all over, white, black, you know, Asian, Latinos, they're like, dude, when that mariachi played, man, like my skin was crawling. It was Goosebumps. beautiful. I could tell. I listen. I I wasn't like on the floor, but I was kind of up there. Mm -hmm. But the goosebumps in the arena, like I felt it. I was like, oh yeah, nah, it's this is her moment. She got it. Yeah, yeah. and then uh, me coming out with oh that that road to uh, Austin. That's probably one of the best uh, road two that they've done. It was so beautifully. Yeah. Done. Giancarlo did it. He's one of my favorites from production. But, um, <laughs> but it was it was really beautiful to see that all the ladies, you know, and how excited they were to be part of this. Yeah. And again, because I represent what um, just female wrestling is not. This is not a gimmick for me. This is not a gimmick, man. Yeah. Empowering other women is so important. Absolutely. So so important. I remember coming that mo that was like the morning that uh oh that's that's. Oh. Chris, Chris, my boy. That's my boy, boy. Shout out Chris. No, he, he, does, uh, he does all my gear right now. So, oh, okay, uh, nice. Yeah, he did the jacket and everything. Oh, man. I remember coming out to his room at like 12 o'clock at night the night before. Yeah. Because he, I literally didn't sleep to do that gear. Look, that's yes. hard. Yeah, I'm telling you. Dustin, that's my, Dustin. my wrestling dad. Yeah. Yes. It was very, very intense. And then we put the 316 in the back because, you know, 316, Absolutely. that's when I want it. Yeah. And um, and just knowing that this city has taken me as their daughter and, like, a lot of the very important things has happened here. I became a citizen here. Um, this is where where we started, like, laying roots. Uh, we, we got our first apartment because, you know, we, we couldn't afford it before when I came <laughs> from California. Uh, my my dad and my sister were here to experience this and um, and just representing Latinos in a way that I don't think they have been represented in a long time. It's so so Why important. I'm not, I'm not gonna change. And uh, and being Latina is just in general. It's like you always saw the men. You know, you still have Rey Mysterio and Eddie Guerrero, right? Uh, you know, Chavo Guerrero, but you never had a female that it's. That, that representation of Latinas and, and just having and becoming a, being a role model, which I hate using that word, but it's I, I am a role model for yeah. a lot of the young the young women and 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 other and other women from other ages. So this was like intense, man. And coming out with a Texas flag, everybody was like, "Oh my God, yeah, yeah I, I just give it to her." Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, I almost yes. I almost flipped over the rafters because I, I was yeah, in there screaming. Like, I was screaming my lungs out. I was I was so excited. Yeah, it was, and this is iconic. They're actually doing one of the figures with with that gear. Oh, look at that! Well, listen, I'm just gonna put that out there. I need that so we can have it here on the set and hang it up here. Be oh great. man! And then when I came out, and I remember there was like four people with like. I'm like hugging the fam right there. Yeah. Ooh, the fam. Uh, then when I'm, I was gonna say something. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow. You know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They, you know, like the rock when they used to have like rock and like somebody would carry like R O C K. Yeah. And they had Rosa, and I was like, fuck, I'm famous. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was. It's pretty intense, but uh, yeah. Yeah, this match was. Yeah, this match was insane. Fun. It was. It was. It looked like it was a lot of. Well, I don't want to say a lot of fun, but no, a lot of pain not. involved. And yeah, pain and body aches and all that stuff, man. And, yeah, but it was. It was entertaining nonetheless. The stunner. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So it was intense, man. But um, yeah. I'm really proud that it happened in front of my father, because I don't know if he's gonna be able to be with us for a long, long time. And but he got to see his daughter become a champion. <laughs> That's always big. Yeah, my mom, she was just like, I see from, I will see you with the picture because I, I hate you when you're a <laughs> And if she sees this, she's, uh, she'll be like, yeah, uh, I support you from afar. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm God sure bless she, you. I'm sure she hit your phone up like, yo, are you okay? Mija, te vas a morir ahí luchando, ya. <laughs> right? Am I right? She says that all the time. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm praying to God that you stop wrestling because you're going to kill yourself, <laughs> Mija. I'm like, Mom, shut up, man. I'm about to feed you and my dad for three years. So. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's, 
It's it it was a very very beautiful moment honestly. Um the aftermath at, when you become a, a a champion is always tricky because like baby face champions are kind of hard to like build up, yeah. you know, and I feel like in even in both of the companies it's been a little like hit and miss. Um with Bianca it's a different story, but I feel like it's, they still Bianca and uh Liv Morgan they still yeah. kind of like falling, you know, behind a little bit too. Some of the stories are getting good, but it's it's hard. It's hard to like build up um baby faces but um like i said i'm really i've been really really blessed to um been in the position that i am because regardless if like if i get tv time or not is what i've had been able to do outside of of aw in terms of representing the representation and, and yeah. all the opportunities that i have been able to obtain due to the fact that i am a champion Regardless, regardless if I am on TV or not, I'm hurt. It's still a champion. <laughs> Absolutely. And I'm not pulling at Shawn Michaels, okay? <laughs> <laughs> just want to make that very clear. Yeah, for sure. Another hometown legend. But yeah, for sure. just, what a correlation, right? Um, and speaking of, you know, doing things outside of promotion, Mission Pro Wrestling. Yes. Let's talk about that. Because I know that that's big to you right now. That's our baby. Yes. Yeah. We just celebrated three-year anniversary. Wow. Wow. Yeah, um, my Congrats. son. My son made his debut there last year. Hold on, man. Let's talk. You wrestling too? You get in the ring too? Oh man! Yeah. Only when he wants to. You know, I'm not pushing him. I got gotcha. you. I, I try. It's, it's, when they're second generation, it's very hard to like. When the parents are super famous, yeah, they're like, oh no, no, you, your kid needs to be a wrestler. And like, if he wants to be a wrestler, he's gonna be a wrestler sure. when he's ready. I mean, I we introduce him to wrestling, and um, you're 14, right? When you started with training. When he was 14. Wow. And like, he's, you know, at his time, he's progressively doing, he's very talented. And that's what I like, pisses me off. Like, God. <laughs> Why you gotta be good? <laughs> yes. But he's very talented, very charismatic, and you can't yeah. teach charisma. So, for sure. And he sells me tickets. So, yeah, he can be booked. Oh, man. That's always a plus. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, we have had this show for over three years, and our focus was mainly to represent women that haven't been able to get an opportunity and haven't been, like, accepted for who they are. Gotcha. Because, you know, their race, their size, uh, their age, um, yeah. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we've been very successful in the last three years. Um, we are uh, – we, we try from the from moment one to be self-sufficient. So we purchase our own uh, ring, our entrance. Uh, we're still working on certain stuff. But we have, like, a lot of support from – uh, different organizations from hybrid school of wrestling and then our pops jack who's uh, always been very helpful he like let us borrow a bunch of his equipment because we're all like a big family at the yeah. end and we have brought women from all over the country um all over the world and now we're um we're working on trying to get international talent yeah so we do like a sort of a an exchange i think it is important for the girls especially the new generation of girls that are coming out to like have the opportunity to work with other people that otherwise they wouldn't. So, um, Holly Dad, it was uh, our third champion. Uh, she unfortunately was not able to wrestle this time to defend her championship. And then they had we had a casket match this last uh, Saturday. Yeah, which, which was it was a three way double casket match. Wow. Yeah. Wow. wow. That's insane. And and I'm actually mad because I remember, I remember hearing about this event and I I wanted to check this out. But I ended up missing it because I seeing a casket match. I'm I'm always I'm always signed up. Sign me up for casket matches. Yeah, I think they're entertaining. Yeah, we we uh, we've been doing really well, and I like we have a lot of support from the community, uh, from the international community too. We had Simon Miller, he came and yeah, we, people loved it. Uh, we have had uh, Dave Lagreca the year prior to that. Uh, we had Mia Khalifa when we had Sabotage Wrestling. Oh, wow. Yeah. Because she was talking shit about, like, oh, yeah, wrestling is fake and shit. And everybody's like, fuck you, bitch. <laughs> fuck you, die. And I was like, <laughs> and I was like, uh, I know you live in Austin. You want to come to our show? Right. Yeah, I'll teach you wrestling. And she was all about it. And ever since then, everybody's like, oh, Camille, sorry. We would like to have you in your show. Like, come on, shut the fuck up. <laughs> I got her right, right, first. Right. And I chop. There's a video where I'm chopping her chest, and I remember Anna came before before he came to live with us. Like, you know me, a Khalifa. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It was funny. Yeah, I, I bet. <laughs> no, because one of my I didn't know who Mia Khalifa was. I was like, yo, yeah. 
yo, you know, you don't know who Mia Cliff is? Like, no. And then he sends me some links and I was like, bro, why are you sending me this? <laughs> <laughs> I want to see it. And then she came. So we've used a lot of YouTubers. We use a lot of other uh, celebrities to like bring our, you know, our product out. Because yeah. again, it's so important that we continue to pr promote diversity and equality. Yes. In the business. And yes. that's, that's like the one thing I have said. And I said it, um, uh, and busted open is like for me having a place where you feel welcome where you feel like you belong is so important yes. because when you are throughout your whole career feeling like you're an outsider like nobody wants you nobody likes you or that you feel it like you're always like swimming against the current it's, it's very tiring but when you are with a group of women or in a group in, in where you feel foster and nurtured and, mm -hmm. and you feel like you belong it's a lot more easier for you to like blossom right and um and and that is so important and i continue to say that and i will continue to uh invest my own money on this and it, to again to support a diverse group of women because it's so important to see diversity on our tv it's 2022 absolutely and like our I mean, the world is changing. Yes. Right? It's not just black and white. It's like yellow, brown, sugar, color, <laughs> caramel. You know? <laughs> For sure. Mixed. So it's it's important that we see that. Yeah. And I will continue to talk about it and I will continue to uh, do stuff about it. And I'm an activist. So, um, yeah. like, I there's a lot more that I want to do. And like I said, Mission Pro Wrestling is our baby. And uh, we have a, a big vision for it in the next couple of years. Yeah. Now, this is big. Um, I'm actually congratulations with you know hitting three years and everything. I think that's that's a big deal. And do you consider like San Antonio kind of the headquarters of it? Now, now it is the headquarters. Yes. Yeah. That reason why we move. I remember I was telling that to my our partner. Uh, I was telling him, um, there's no women's wrestling in Texas, bro. Uh, the scene is pretty whack. You know, it was like six years ago. Wow. And this is when we were in o and we were in Oakland and we had Sabotage Wrestling, which was a uh, more of a it was the same style, but we were doing a lot of intergender wrestling mm. uh, the, at the time. And we moved here, and then we started blossoming. We passed Sabotage because it was, like, business-wise, we didn't do as well. And then he was bored. It was like, oh, let me just, you know, start something else. And then, and then he and, him and my friend Jeremiah created Mission Pro Wrestling, but it was a mixed show. And then we had an issue in 2022, 2022, 2020, where the Speak Out movement came out on Twitter. And a lot of women were complaining about being harassed about, you know. And I saw a video that you posted that yeah. was surprising to you, I think, as well. Because I don't know. Did you know the the girl that was on the ring talking? She kind of came out and was saying some stuff. And everyone was kind of shocked about it. Alejandra? Yes. Um, yes. That's why, um, actually, she's, she's she, by the way, if anybody's listening to this, she's raising money. She has a goal fund. She's going to uh, need money for an attorney because nobody wants to listen to her. And she's done, tried to do everything the proper way. That's the reason why a lot of women that are being abused, and men too, that are being sexually or uh, emotionally abused, mm. they don't go and say anything because nobody does anything. And it's wow. very complicated. Even yeah. to call the police for an emergency like that, it takes like three hours. By the time you get there, you're like all fucked up, and right. beat up and everything. Yeah. So she was very brave to come out. And, um, and I really... Like, you know, you will think that that's, that wouldn't happen now after we had those situations because there was a lot of uh, some of the wrestlers and some of the bookers that were taking, you know, advantages on the girls and guys. Wow. Uh, you know, on the DMs or just like personally, like, you know, and um, that's one of the things that I always say, like, if somebody asks you for sex to like get you somewhere. I mean, do you do do you boo like by no means, but it, when it's force, is that's not that's cool. not right. No, you know, and some of these girls are really young. They were like 15, 16, 17. Wow. So they are grooming them and stuff. They're like, come on, man, like you don't do that. And yeah. Um, and yeah, so we started Mission Pro, and we were like, let's have women run the show and see what happens, right? So that people can see that women can actually do stuff. So they yeah. they stop talking about it, and um, and. Again, we've been very successful. We have fostered a lot of, of wonderful talent. And we, you know, as much as I could with the influence, like little influence that I have, like I have been able to like support some of the, some of the young talent and get, help them get some opportunities. Because at the end of the day, that's the only thing I'm going to take to my grave is like what I, what I give to the world, right? For sure. And uh, my family. And, and so that was what I was telling my son 
our house is like the immigrant house. Like everybody, <laughs> everybody ends up in our house, you know, because we always open the door. He's like, yeah. When we were in our, our old apartment, how many people did we end up having at one time? Like 10. 10 people. A two wow. Ben- wow. Yeah, two bedroom wow. apartment. And then we'll have girls just stay over uh, because they have bookings. And then like, you know, some of the wrestlers from Mexico, they stay there. Like, and we always host everyone. Our our, our doors are always open for, for wrestlers because I've been there, man. Like my, my tío's. Uh, in East LA, they used to open their their floor for me for me and Holidad when we were like touring over there because we were trying to make you know a dollar. Sure. And like my friend David from the wrestling guy store in in, in Los Angeles too, like he always had a bed or a sofa for me to like you know crash. And um, uh, the same with my friend Kevin and in, in in the East Coast, like he's the one of the very few people that believe in me, and he opened the doors for his house. And I always said to him, I'm like, I will continue to do that. And we get burned and people like always mess, you know, fuck us over or whatever. But it's like for those who haven't done that, I continue to help them until, you know, the wheels fall off because it's so important to have support. And I, I was blessed that I had it from the moment that I started to like to now that I'm on top and I and I'm going to keep doing that because it's important. You know, Absolutely. you just have to pass it on. Yeah. Where, where, where does that <clears throat> kind of come from? Because not a lot of people like I could help someone tomorrow and feel good about it. But then the next day I get fucked over. Right. And then most people is like, I'm never helping anyone again. I, I don't you know. know. I, mean? I think it's like, um, Anakin and I were talking about it because like our families were like that. Like yeah. we always like. Like no we, matter what. Yeah. Like, like my mom will always bring some lady that I, who didn't know who she was. And then she'll <laughs> end up being our nanny. And then my godmother will be like, ¿Qué es esa pinche vieja aquí? Saca. <laughs> right? Wow. So, um, you know, and it was like. Like they always say, see, si comen cinco aquí, comen seis, comen siete, right? If there's yeah. three, four, five people, six, seven, eight people can eat here. And it was always that mentality. We're always, always like serving others. And like sometimes our cousins or family were like broke or whatever. They didn't have no place to stay. They didn't fit in the house. And like, ay, yeah. sí que se duerme en la cama con los niños. And there's like single bed and five kids sleeping in there. We were talking about that yesterday. I was like, oh, yeah, I used to sleep in a, in a bunk bed. When I first moved to America with my parents, this is after I graduated from high school because I used to cross the border all the time. Oh, okay. And then I was living with my auntie and, and yeah, I sleep in a bunk bed. I used to sleep with my sister on, the, on a single bed. And he was telling me like he, it was similar for him in a queen size bed with five people, wow. five kids. So we never had space. We didn't know what uh, privacy was. So. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why we do it because that's yeah. how we were raised, you, yeah, right? Because sure. so, uh, growing up, me, I'm second generation, but uh, growing up, it was always that. I viene el primo. I viene la prima. You know what I mean? Like, you just had to, like, and when as a kid, I I look back and I'm like, I'm fucked up because I'd be mad. <laughs> like, dog, I got a lot going on right now. I, I don't want to share my room. <laughs> but you had to. You know what right, I'm saying? Right. You had to. And it, and now I understand it was. It's kind of it was built into us. Like no matter what, you gotta help, especially with your family. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, because like when I was in Japan, like uh, my senpai, which was like my my senior wrestler, yeah, Miss um, Kimura san, she she took care of me, you know, and uh, she just took care of the, the the stable that she had, mm-hmm. and she treated us like family. So every time I was out there, she'll like take us to dinner. Uh, if we were struggling, she would raise money for us. Like with La Rosa, we we cooked and then we like entertained the fans and we raised seven hundred bucks, yeah. you know, for her. So she will always try to do stuff. And then when her her daughter committed suicide due to bullying online, wow. which is another thing that is very prevalent in the wrestling business and is really fucked up to tell you the truth because it really affects a lot of people, you know. And she killed herself after she was attacked constantly by the same person, constantly, 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 and by thousands of other people because she did uh, a show on Netflix. Um, she pretty much lost all her money to fought this guy and to create uh, a law that prohibits bullying and like harassment on, on social media yeah. because her daughter died. And that was like her, she was like her, she was going to be a future, you know, probably Hall of Famer or yeah. something in Japan. Wow. And it was horrible. Like the way that she died, I remember seeing the pictures and like the messages that she put before she, she killed herself. And then when they found her, it was a little too late. Wow. And um, so, yeah, it was it was that camaraderie that I had my first tour in Japan, which was Chris Wolf, who was working for the company. She was taking care of all the, the foreign wrestlers, but she didn't have to. Yeah. And then after she wasn't able to do it, I will, you know, take the girls, like I will, 
walked him around if I knew how to like take the bus or whatever. And then you just grew from there. And then I say this because I, somebody did it for me. I'm going to do it for somebody else. And I'll tell the girls, if I help you, help somebody else. Yeah, right. You know? For sure. Right, for sure. I feel like we covered a lot within for sure. the X my time, you know? Oh, well, I got mean? more, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, shoot. And we and I learned a lot because, I mean, me growing up, I would, maybe like 13, 14 is when I stopped watching wrestling. Yeah. But back then, I was like rabid. I was the guy. I, I never went to a match, unfortunately. Maybe if I go now, I come back, right? You maybe. Have, yeah. Maybe you should come to our show and this is December 10th. We're okay. going to be raising money again for the Salvation Army and... If you have extra toys or you want to bring a toy, Absolutely. you know, you should bring a toy. No, nah, we'll definitely pull right, up. Well, no, nah, we definitely doing we're, that. We're, we're in there for sure. For sure. Yeah. You, yeah. Maybe you should interview some other girls too. Yeah. yeah. Let us, plug us in. Yes. Well, there you go. I bet. We're in there. You know <laughs> what I mean? Um, is there a dream, ma- a dream match that you would want to have done? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Sarah Stock, who's like my my um, motivation to become a wrestler. Uh huh. She was a Canadian. She's a Canadian uh, that moved to Mexico and she became a superstar. Wow. So Talk about stock. Polar opposite dark regions. An- you dark know? Angel. She was talking about that, and I was like, oh man. And I remember like the first year, like the total fan fan girl, like oh my god, on Facebook. <laughs> oh my god, I love you. I want to be a wrestler. What will you do? Like, what, yeah. what, what can you tell me that I should do? And then she told me, and then. She wrestled in the same uh, promotion that I wrestle in Japan and stardom. Mm. And she left her gear there. Oh, oh yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I put that thing on and I was like doing all the poses like her. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, and then, uh, um, what's her name? Selena Vega. She did her th- a tour there. And I like yeah. I showed her the pictures and then she sent them to Sarah. And she's like, oh, my God, you should see her because they're really good friends. Yeah. You should see her, my God. And she's like, oh, that's so cute. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm such a fangirl. <laughs> <laughs> and that was like my moment of fame. I, uh, man, I, yeah. yeah. That was fun. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Man. Growing up as a kid, I watched a lot of like Lucha Libre. Mm-hmm. Did you watch? Did, I know you say you didn't really watch wrestling growing up, but like. I remember watching some. My dad wasn't really into like sports. Mm-hmm. So when there was nothing on, like he would put. Triple A. Right. Yeah. So I was, when I met Mascarita Sagrada, man. Yeah. Bro. Yeah. Bro. You yeah. talking about fanboying? Word. Yeah. He was like, Mascarita Sagrada is like this. You yeah. Know? And I'm like, Mascarita Sagrada, Dios mío. Yo te quiero mucho. Yo te veía cuando estaba chiquita. I said, shut the fuck up. I, told him, I feel old. I'm like, okay. Then we came from, and, um, and then, um, who else did I meet? When I met Conan, too, I was like... Conan was Conan. Yeah. Dog. Dude, K-Dog. It wasn't like because of the wrestling. It was, you know, because he was in the soap operas. He's, yeah. He, yeah. I used to have the cassette and everything. Yeah, he, <laughs> and his music. He rapped, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He was yeah. a superstar, bro. For That's sure. crazy. Yeah. It, it was... I don't... He didn't really talk, but like La Parca, I always got a kick out of him. And then, yes. he, used to, and then, then he got like a mini Parca. Right. Out of nowhere. Aluche, Aluche, Aluche and Tinieblas. That's another one. Mm-hmm. I met them later. Later on, in a Mex- I met him in Met Mexico City. I was like, I used to watch your movies there. <laughs> so bad, but so awesome. El Santo, Blue Demon, because yeah. of the movies. Like a lot of the, like the stuff that we watch was like those El Santo contra las momias, El yeah. Santo contra las mujeres vampiro. Uh, no, when I, I when know. I saw Coco and Santo was in there, or a version of him. Mm-hmm, you think mm-hmm. he was the? You seen Coco, right? Yeah, yeah, I've seen the, Coco. the wrestler and the guy, gotcha. and the, even the security guys like take a picture with me. <laughs> <laughs> but I saw that I was like, damn, they know what's up because that was the guy. You know? yeah. yeah. So it's like uh, it was like I said, it was different. It wasn't like oh my god, I used to watch this, this mm-hmm. match was great. I mean, I have I watch the matches now to study, right? right. And uh, Latin lover. Remember Latin Lover? Ooh, Latin Lover, Latin Lover was a shit, man. Um, the women, I didn't really pay attention because they, they never really, like, uh, put them on the spotlight. You know, and that's what I noticed when I went in the wrestling in Mexico City, which reminds me, Mexico City was insane. They tried to rape me in the metro. Wow. You know? <laughs> yes. I don't never feel so many ha- hands over my body ever. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I was like, where? Look, look, look. What, 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 what's going on? <laughs> yeah, it was pretty insane. Um, and I remember, like, we had to take, like, three metros, then a bus. We went to Pachuca to for an all-female show, right? Yeah. It was this big um, place that was very um, historical. Uh, and there was only 20 people there. Uh, 
Wow. And some of the girls were getting paid twenty dollars a torta en la soda. Wow. Damn. That's wow. when I, that's when I learned there's no respect for women's wrestling, and I was like, I gotta do something. That's wow. crazy. Yeah. So it's like being in different places and wrestling different places and seeing how women are being treated in different parts of the world. Yeah. Really like created another version of how we should treat women athletes in the business yeah. here in America. Mm. Right. And that's why I brought it all to Mission Bro. Absolutely. And that's why I'm so strong about certain things. But in certain aspects, once you get to another level, you have to play ball. Right. And it's harder to make a difference because there's a lot more politics. Right. So if you can do it in the independent scene and where you can help them get where they need to get, you know, and you give them the tools like, you know, you, you get an attorney for this. You need to trademark your name. You need to become a businesswoman. Uh, respect yourself. Uh, be a brand because now it's all about being a brand. It is very, very important. Yeah, most definitely. And, and, and I know the, the politics of business, more or less nine times out of ten, they always say it's 90% business, 10% entertainment or sports or whatever it is that you're getting into. You really don't fuck with the politics, don't you? <laughs> it seems like it. Um, I, I, you know, I have respect for the business. I play ball. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I don't know. How it, 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 yeah, I, I, I man. Yeah, I. <laughs> I, kind of, I feel like I kind of. I feel like we ran through everything in a short amount of time. I'm kind of, I, I'm kind of clueless, but thank you. Anyway, for for pulling up, Miss Thunder Rosa, I appreciate it. I know we, it's been a long time since we tried to make this happen. Yeah. And finally here, man. Um, any final questions, Skrills? I know you were kind of reserved this episode, but yeah, mostly because I have a tos, I have a cough, but. <laughs> But uh, no, I guess I do have just, I guess, one last question. And it's just more about like, you know, like you say, you started so late, right? Yeah. And we just say 28. Mm -hmm. But up until then, you kind of seemed like you followed the, you know, being second. For me, being second generation Mm -hmm. was always go to school, graduate, get a good job, right? Like you followed that path up until you were like, this ain't ain't for me. I always knew that I was going to be a star. I always knew. I remember okay. telling my mom, Mama, yo voy a ser una estrella. And mama, ya callate. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, no, 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 for real. Like, yeah. I, I know, I know something, something's big is coming, right? I right. didn't know what it was going to be. How or when, right? No, no, know. no, but it just, you know, became wrestling and I, Honestly, like, even now, like, yesterday when we went to Luling, my son was wearing my t-shirt and the guy was like, hey, where you get the t-shirt at? And I was like, pro wrestling tees, bro, I'm Thunder Rosa. That's my son. He's like, no way, bro. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, um, like, I'm getting recognized now in certain places. And that's so weird to me because I'm yeah. just like, hey, hola, soy Melissa. You know? <laughs> but it's like, it's, it's, it's wild. And then the fact that I was trending so many times on Twitter and I was just like in my house hitting like, what's going on? What's yeah. happening? Like, it's, it's, it's. It's wild. It's yeah. so wild, you know, good or bad. It was wild, you know. Yeah, for sure. And but the, was there like, do, do you remember it being a certain moment where you were like, "Yo, this," because you could have gone the safe route and got the job, been at it for twenty some years. Nah, and- man, that I, I was supposed to uh, start getting, uh, start doing my masters mm-hmm. the year that I started wrestling, wow. and I had and I have the package still ready to be sent. Wow. Because wow. I wanted to be a, a therapist. So would you say it was just belief in yourself that you were like, I'm going to do this? Uh, it's not I, a sure thing. I, no, I think, I think I always had a, a higher call okay. than just being a normal, you know, nine to five. I cannot do a nine to five job. I can I just can. Yeah. I'd rather be an entrepreneur and like a creator and something, be my own boss sort yeah. of kind of. But uh, yeah, because you can, I know I'm, I'm supposed to be touching more people's lives you know, in, a, in a way that being a therapist wouldn't allow me to. Gotcha. I mean, for Christ's sake, I'm going. I'm going to like UC Berkeley to be a speaking engagement for Flipped the college athletics, and yeah. I wasn't even yeah. an athlete when I was in, in UC Berkeley. Yeah. You know, I was just an activist student, you know, first generation, mm-hmm. and and now I'm like the first ever professional wrestler that graduated from UC Berkeley. Yeah. Which I pay my student loans now. Hey. hey. <laughs> that's that's big. So, what would you tell that that little girl that's watching this? That's or don't play with Barbies. Play with action figures. Play with Thunder Rosa action figures. <laughs> For straight up, or or even shoot, even that that twenty eight year old that's you know striving to you know chase their dreams, and they feel like 
this is all they know. It is never too late to change your path. Never too late. You just got to work hard as fuck. But it's never too late. You yeah. know, invest in yourself, like sacrifice, go for it. And if you fail, fine, try again. We is, it's just like, you have to take risks in life. You have to. And if you sit on your ass and you just live a comfortable life all the time and you never like get out of your comfort zone, you're probably never going to experience the beauty of what life can bring you with the good and the bad. Yeah. Because there's a lot of good, but there's also a lot of bad. And I cannot tell you like how happy I am that I can be like, tell my son, hey, did you want to go to Miami for your birthday? Yeah, let's go to Miami for your birthday. All right, let's go. Like, you know, taking him to places that I never thought I would. I took him to Chicago. We did a bunch of cool stuff. Um, I still have to take him to New York because I told him that I was going to. <laughs> uh, and, and the fact that we probably have an opportunity to go and travel together. Oh, yeah, we went to California and wrestled together. That was fun. That you know, was cool. That was really cool. Um, he met a lot of his, like, uh, heroes from when he was little and like that's and now he's taking pictures now he knows them like in a personal level um like stuff like that and that's why it is so important for me to like give him that example that you know life is gonna be hard and i'm not gonna lie i'm not gonna say like uh, to the young my little brown girl that thinks everything's gonna be easy girl it ain't gonna be easy you know yeah. for one you're brown sister so <laughs> yeah. and two you know a lot of the times we're not Again, like I was telling you, we're not meant to be successful because that's what they make us believe with all the the things that they put in front of us or like the the the, the shortcomings that we have that we were born into. Yeah. Right. And just like being able to open your eyes and just like getting out of your comfort zone is the most difficult thing. Cause I cannot tell you how difficult it was for me to move out of San Diego and leave my family behind. Mm. I just remember like when I moved out of my house and um. My dad was going through like he was going through it, and my one of my aunts, rest in peace. Uh, she was she just came out of the of jail, you know, and she was living with us, so he had a lot of responsibility. And I was like, Dad, peace out. I gotta go to college, yeah. you know. And then when I told him that I was, I remember I was like, Oh, I gotta step in UC Berkeley. He didn't even know what it was. He was like, oh, Okay, whatever. And I was like, Wow. And, I, <laughs> <laughs> and 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 remembered leaving. Leaving San Diego, I cannot forget that moment because I know that was gonna change my whole life. Yeah, because that was that was the moment that I that it set the tone for everything. If I don't never gone to Berkeley, yeah. I would have never been a wrestler, which is the weirdest thing, right? Yeah. And having that van, that a 18, 1985 caravan, Dutch caravan that we had to pour water every hour because it was you know wow. overheating. Uh, I knew that that was gonna be. That was going to be the pad that I was going to take. It was going to be hard. It was going to be heat magnet. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we gonna try heat, but we we're going to make it, right? Yeah. And I'm not even halfway done with what I'm supposed to be doing yet. Like, I'm, I'm about to, like, record a song now. I've been working on, on okay. singing. Okay. Because I, I have the pipes in me. I can sing. Like, you know, there's other stuff. with We want to do some acting stuff. But with my back injury, I wasn't able to do some of the opportunities that came, came about. Gotcha. But again, it's like, this injury like really helped me reflect on what is important in life, you know, family, uh, stability, yeah. um, being, you know, counting my blessings with, with everyone because um, a year ago I wasn't where I am right now, mm. right? And, um, and, and just seeing that and, and being able to share that with people and, and to give like that, that, that question, that positive, positive things to people. Speaking and speaking engagements and all that stuff is yeah. so important because that's how how am I gonna give up to I mean give to people, but yeah don't don't give up is this is the thing when things get harder just do not give up yeah think about it but don't 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 do it because if you do you're gonna regret it, yeah. and um, and sometimes change is very difficult, changing your life is difficult and just getting out of your comfort with being with your abuelita with your mom with your family and going somewhere where you don't know anybody and starting all over again that is hard i did it when we moved to oakland we did it when we moved here you know and, and i'm still doing it right now and it's and it is hard it is really hard and sometimes you just want to say fuck it you know you're yeah. gonna give up and be a normal person and have a nine to five and get paid 15 dollars an hour and probably have three jobs because i can't afford you know to live in in even in San Antonio now, it's so expensive. Yeah. So Shoot, tell me about it. It's a reality of things. So it sacrifice, plan, and always you know it's it's not bad having you know two two three gigs. 
It's yeah. not bad at all. Have right. your, you know, have your regular job. And I think like The Rock has said that, and a lot of people, motivational speakers, say, work your nine to five, but then from five to whenever you go to sleep, work in your yeah, what your dream yours. job is. Yeah. yeah, because that's important. Mm -hmm. That's important because one day it might pay off. You hear that, Skrill? <laughs> Loud and clear. <laughs> <laughs> say Duvali, and I say hi, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Thunder Rosa, thank you Absolutely. for coming out, taking your time out your busy schedule, and kicking it with us. We definitely wish you a quickly, safe, safe, speedy recovery. And well, see you back. I'm, I'm trying, but you know, Thunder Rosa be too thunderous. And <laughs> <laughs> I've been cleaning too much because I get anxious. I'm, I just want to exercise. <laughs> I just want to run, for Christ's sakes. Yeah. Yes. Now, so uh, if so, if they can reach, uh, if they want to reach out to you, how can they reach out to you? Social medias and all that stuff. Hit me up, baby. Um, at YouTube, you can watch me on YouTube, uh, uh -huh. Thunder Rosa, on uh, Instagram and Twitter, which I don't use anymore, but my media guy does. Uh, it's Thunder Rosa twenty two, and uh, my website is thunderrosa.net. Mission Pro Wrestling, you can watch all our shows at missionprowrestling.com. We have merchandise there. I have merchandise there, and if you want to buy one of my Figures, well, good luck because we could not find them. We went to Walmart. There you was find not, them? no Target, nothing. It's so hard to find my figures and just a regular one. Just wow. a regular one. Wow. The chase is even more like difficult, but. Yeah, we're gonna know, do it. We're gonna do it. Oh, no, we're we gonna, we gonna find one. We're gonna yeah. find one. Yeah, we're definitely. Oh, and I think at the end of, uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, at the end of the year, the um, lights up one is gonna come out. The one with the green gear. Yeah. Green gear. Oh, okay. It's supposed to be coming out. Nice. Bet. I'm, I'm on it. I'm honest, so that way we can hang it up. And Absolutely, yeah. hang it up here. We're gonna have to hit set. you again real quick for the for the feeder. You know, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for coming on the show. We definitely appreciate you pulling up, talking to us. You can find me at at Mozzie's World Official at Instagram, um, Twitter soon, um, TikTok as well, and I'm also changing my Twitch name as well. That's at Mozzie's World Official. Um, sponsors, right? Sponsor time. Yeah. Nightclouds Be sure to visit Mozzie22 dot uh, Mozzie22 in the promo code um, to get 10% off your entire purchase. Also visit Daisy Davies Entertainment.com as well to get your Mozzie's World merch there. Davies. Yeah, and uh <laughs> yeah, oh, that's right, you trying to get in the ring. Hell yeah. yeah. Hey. Sign me up. Cam. Q, she got, you she got hands, boy. She got hands, man. It, whether whether it be MMA, wrestling, <laughs> and then <Mozzie's> <laughs> <laughs> You see it. Uh, be sure to like, share, subscribe, and be sure to check out Thunder Rosa's YouTube channel as well. Oh, I forgot. You can also find me on thunderrosaofficial.com. That's where I only put nothing but personal, very personal pictures, very sexy pictures. And also you can order pictures that you want that are not completely disrespectful because I might not do it for you. But, <laughs> but no, but that's like the, the page where I post a lot of my personal like journey and like the stuff with my... Right uh, my injury, my walks, like I think you don't see that on social media. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Well, that's the way they get to know you personally, huh? I mean, yeah, I'm kind of an open book, but yeah. <laughs> but now, now more. There's like a lot of other stuff. I'm just being very guarded on certain stuff, so right I can only put it if you pay premium pages. And also, <laughs> if you pay, like I have like different levels. For sure. The highest levels, I I hang out with them like once a month on Zoom. Oh, okay. I send dope. them. I send them letters. I send them special like, um, not eight by tens, but um. Uh, what's it called? Polaroids. Polaroids. Like, yeah. Shaking the Polaroids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, different Polaroids. That I only take one of those, and that's the only picture. So it's like a very, very cute little thing. Yeah. Like, so, yeah, and like a special merchandise. That's dope. Yeah. That's dope. And you can also support it by what, Pro Wrestling Tees? Yeah. Yep. Pro Wrestling Tees. Or your website as well. Yes. But if you, uh, you buy that stuff, you know, I got them royalties, baby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Be sure to support. Like we do over here. Come on. Like, share, subscribe. Your boy Mozzie, Skrills, Thunder Rosa, everybody in here. See y'all. Peace. Peace. Maserati. So focused. I just need some meaning to my name. Plus, I'm cheating with these codes. If you think it's a game, that's real talk.